Any Apple fans among you will remember the company's announcement of the new M1 chip last year, which was built into their most recent models of computers. But if you've been wondering what exactly the new microchip does, you're not the only one. So here's why M1 has been described as groundbreaking, and exactly how it set a new standard for performance in laptops everywhere. Here's how it happened. Let's start by mentioning the company that provided the predecessor to Apple's own chips inside their computers, Intel. The American corporation is by far the world's biggest chip manufacturer, producing the integrated circuits for electronics firms like HP, Lenovo, and Dell. Intel chips were long held as the gold standard of microchips and the clear market leader. That was until a company called AMD released their latest brand of chip, Ryzen, in 2017. In the few years since their launch, Ryzen CPUs have managed to offer similar performance to Intel's, often at more attractive prices. But what's this got to do with the M1 chip? Well, as you'd expect, the newer processors are built to improve the performance of Apple's laptops. But there's slightly more to it. The past few years have seen MacBooks sell around 20 million units annually, acquiring their previous chips, the Intel Core i5 and i7, for around $200 a piece. While experts believe Apple's new M1, which is designed in-house, cuts out the middleman, and is able to be manufactured for the price of just $50, a saving of around $150. $50 per unit, or $3 billion every year once the chips are integrated into every model of MacBook. Going back to performance, Apple has made some big claims regarding the M1 laptop's efficiency. In the announcement of the new chip, the company claimed it was faster than 98% of PC laptops sold in the previous 12 months, with the same peak performance at just a quarter of the power usage. Of the M1's 8 CPU cores, 4 are made for high performance with the other four built for basic computing needs, using just 10% of the power compared to their turbocharged counterparts. This adds up to an extra six hours of battery life compared to the previous MacBook Air, depending on which app you're running. M1 devices also come with a translation layer, called Rosetta 2, which converts older applications made to be run on Intel into a readable format for the M1 chip. What's more, as it's similar in functionality to the A14 chip found in the iPhone 12 range, MacBooks fitted with the new processor are able to run apps designed for iPad, although maybe with a few modifications to account for the absence of a touchscreen. Surely one of the biggest draws is the basic idea that the M1 chip has been designed specifically for MacBook devices, something Intel could never claim. The result is not only a performance efficiency nearly unmatched by rival companies, but also the opportunity to scale the chips as they wish, adding more cores or other performance demands without having to negotiate with a third party. But that's not to say that Apple are about to push on and form a laptop monopoly. Some specialised applications may actually offer reduced performance if they haven't been optimised for the latest chip. Plus, the new heights reached by the M1 chip should hopefully cause both Intel and Ryzen to raise their game. Throw in the rumours of Samsung following suit and bringing their own microchips in-house, and this won't necessarily mean it's game over in the laptop industry. And that's how it happened. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to see future videos on other topics like Ryzen or the history of Intel. Thanks for watching.